Jesus, what a friend for sinners. Jesus, lover of my soul. Friends, Welcome to the Unknown Bible, the broadcast ministry of Bible Believers Baptist Church in Corpus Christi, Texas. Join us now for today's Bible study with our pastor, Bevan Zwelder. Today we're going to talk about making decisions. This is very important because we constantly are faced with decisions. And as Christians, we, we're wondering, how, how do I know if I'm doing the right thing? And so after looking in the Bible and after years of making decisions and after years of counseling with people who are making decisions, I believe we've come up with some things that can be very helpful to you. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. So here are some considerations that should help you when you're making decisions. Remember, now remember, your heart makes your decisions, not your mind. And your heart is revealed in your decisions. Uh, what I mean by that is uh, sometimes you'll see young people and then when they're, you know, 20 years old or 22 years old or whatever, you'll see them make a decision. You'll think, how in the world did he or she make that decision? And when you go back and you consider their upbringing, you think, well, they were just straight and did all the stuff right in the, in the church and everything. But what what's happened is something was down in the heart that you couldn't see and and what happens is that when they are in a position then to make that decision, then what was down in the heart is revealed. And so it's not something that they just did right then. It's something that they've been bringing into their character for a long period of time. And now under the right set of circumstances, boom, the heart is revealed. So you must keep your heart with all diligence. The Bible says that. Keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. Now, the heart can be a difficult thing to discern, and the reason simply is men look on the outward appearance. God looks on the heart, so if it's your heart, you're looking in the mirror at your face and at your hair and at your, if you're looking in a long mirror, the way you're dressed, you're not really considering your heart. Uh, other people see your outward appearance. They can't see your heart, and on top of that, the heart is deceitful. And so what happens is that these things can go, go on inside of your heart, but as long as you are portraying an image that suggests these things are not in your heart, you can't read it or don't, and other people certainly can't read it. Now the Bible also says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So men and women who you know don't often speak about decisions that are in their hearts because these decisions may be contrary to sound judgment. They may be contrary to parental approval. They may be contrary to God's will. So they're not going to talk about those things, not with people who would counsel them contrary to the decisions they're making, maybe only with the friends that uh, are participating in bad decisions with them. Those might be the only people who know. Uh, you know, I've always said people who are quiet, uh, I'm, I'm always concerned about them. Um, not because I don't like to be around quiet people. I'm just talking about when you see young people and they're guarded and quiet, concerned about that because I think they're hiding something in their heart. And generally speaking, they are because they know if they say too much, it, what they're thinking about is going to come out and then you're going to be like, ooh, that's going to be a problem area. Now, with all that said, here are the major considerations to help you when you're making decisions regarding your life and regarding major decisions, recognizing these things are coming out of what you want to do. They're coming out of your heart. Number one, number one, the fear of God should govern your decisions. The fear of God should govern your decisions. Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So if you're going to make wise choices, then you have to have the fear of the Lord. That's where wisdom begins. Uh, and the nice thing about it is when you when you make a decision uh, and it's and it is prompted by wisdom that comes from the fear of God, you can be confident that it's a good decision. 
Proverbs chapter 14, verse 26 says, In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. And you want that. You want strong confidence that you're making the right decisions. You don't want to make decisions and then second guess whether what you decided was a good decision or a bad decision. It's too late to start analyzing it and, and, and troubling yourself over the decision you've made. Make your decisions out of the fear of the Lord. And the, the beauty of, of wise decisions, the beauty of decisions that are made uh, and governed by the fear of the Lord is that wise decisions are good decisions. Uh, Proverbs chapter 16, verse 20 says, He that handleth a matter wisely shall find good, and whoso trusteth in the Lord, happy is he. So you really want to do that. You want to, you want to make your decisions in the fear of God. And you say, what does that look like? Well, it, it, you know what it looks like? It looks like Esther approaching King Ahasuerus. If you've ever read the book of Esther, when Esther had to approach King Ahasuerus about Haman and the wicked deeds he was doing against the Jews, she was scared about approaching the king. She fasted for three days and three nights. Uh, she prayed continuously through that period of time, and then she humbled herself greatly before approaching the king, and the king was her husband. But she came with a great deal of fear. And the beauty of the fear of the Lord is this. The fear of the Lord, when it's right, when it's fully his fear, that fear will prevail over all other potential fears that you will face in making your decisions. For instance, sometimes people decide to do something because they're afraid of ridicule. In other words, peer pressure. A person says, oh, well, if I, if I say that or decide that, all my friends are going to think, you know, uh, that, that I'm uh, ridiculous and I don't, wanna, I don't want people to make fun of me. You may feel the fear of rejection. If I decide to do that, I will no longer be accepted by this group of people. Oh, I'm telling you, man, when people are making a decision about leaving a religion to go into a relationship with Jesus Christ, oh, ooh, man, this fear of rejection is strong. But the fear of the Lord would compel a person to say, regardless of how my family may treat me over this decision or how my church may treat me over this decision, if this decision is the right decision regarding salvation through the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I must make that decision and not be afraid of rejection because of the fear of God. It will also help you with the fear of man, the fear of man. Many people are more concerned about pleasing men than they are pleasing God. And any of those things I just described will lead you to make bad decisions. So the fear of the Lord, number one, should govern your decisions. Number two. The Bible should direct your decisions. The Bible should direct your decisions. Psalm 119, verse 133. And what does he say? Order my steps in thy word. Okay, and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Order my steps in thy word and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. What's he saying? He's saying, Lord, what you have written, what you have said should guide me. In the, in the things that I do. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. That's what the word of God is. And so as you're trying to decide things, you know, what you don't want to do is you don't want to come to the Bible uh, looking for a verse to confirm the decision you've already made. Okay? Uh, we've, we find that a lot of times with missionaries. They'll, they'll, they'll come by and they'll make a presentation on their work they're going to do on a mission field, and they'll say, you know, I know God wants me to go to such and such a field, and, and, and I have a verse on that. And then they'll take you over to a passage of Scripture and read their verse. And I'm like, that verse doesn't say anything close uh, to, about the thing they're doing. But, you know, they're just desperate to find a verse so that everybody will know, well, bless God, I've got a verse on this. No, the Bible's not like that. The Bible, if you're deciding something major, as you read it and read it and read it, God begins to bring things off the page over a period of time that clarify exactly how he wants you to make a certain decision. And you can't make biblical decisions and decisions that are in the will of God without concerning yourself with what God said in his words. So the Bible should direct your decisions. And I, I, the best way I know how to do that is not to pick up a concordance or just to let it fall open wherever, but to really read it, read it, read it, and let God uh, communicate with you out of the words of God. Now, I will say this. 
I knew a fella, and uh, he didn't have a close walk with the Lord, but he had a walk with the Lord. And uh, whenever he had to make any decision, and he didn't know what to do, he would go home, he would open the Bible wherever it fell open, and he said, invariably within five pages of reading, I knew what to do. I don't know that I can recommend that to you, but I'll tell you what, that's a whole lot better than not looking in the Bible at all. <laughs> The only trouble is, and, and that's why the fear of the Lord has to be first, you can read that Bible looking for the answer you want to find, and it will convince you that you are right. Don't want to go there. Must have the fear of God first, and then the Bible. Bible should direct your decisions. Number three, when you're making major decisions, prayer should guide. Prayer should guide your decisions. You know the verses in Proverbs. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not in thine understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. He shall direct thy paths. All right, well, prayer is acknowledging God. Uh, Proverbs 16, 9 says, A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. All right, then, there you go. The heart is making the decision. A, heart, a man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. When you fear God and you are reading in the Bible, God will direct you. His Holy Spirit will lead you. The Bible says as many as are uh, led of the Spirit, they are the sons of God. You know, w what's happening there is that, that the, the Spirit of God, seeing your fear of God, seeing your concern with the words of God and God's will reveal there as you're praying he will lead you he he will make sure uh, to guide you as you are responsive to his leadership now we can't today do what David did back in the Old Testament by way of inquiring of the Lord where he would just go to the ephod and the priest would make inquiry for him and then he could see exactly what God said for him to do but you know when you really want to know what God wants you to to do. He is not going to leave you in the dark. Somehow, somehow, and I believe God does this differently with different people, He's going to show you. Some people say that God speaks to them and He says this and says that, and I, I don't doubt that. I know that I tried that in my life, and I didn't. I, I got misled because I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know whether the spirit that was talking to me was God or the devil or my own spirit or what it was. So you got to be careful with that. But I can say this, and you know this is to be so. It, when you're praying, when you fear God, when you're in that Bible, God, if you really want to know what he wants you to do, will show you somehow and make plain to you how he wants you to proceed. David inquired of the Lord when they got ready to attack Keilah in 1 Samuel chapter 23 and verse 1. And when he inquired of the Lord in verse 2, the Lord said, Go and smite the Philistines and save Keilah. Well, David's men got really nervous about that. And they were afraid to go into Judah because they would be too close to Saul. And they were afraid Saul would come after David. So David inquired again in verse 4. And the Lord answered him and said, Arise, go down to Keilah, for I will deliver the Philistines into thine hand. So David went. You know, that's, that's really good. David was not in a hurry. He tested that decision with the Lord a couple of times to make sure it was the right decision. What I can safely say is prayer aligns your thoughts with God's thoughts. God uses that exercise where you're taking time with him in prayer to, to, to get your thoughts aligned up with his. So you're going where he wants you to go. Here's the next major consideration when you're, when you're making decisions. Principles, principles should limit your decisions. Now, Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. Solomon says, Hear ye children, the instruction of a father, and attend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also, and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words, keep my commandments, and live. There's a good companion passage to this in Proverbs chapter 6. Verses 20 to 23, Proverbs chapter 6, verses 20 to 23. My son, keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother. Bind them continually upon thine heart and tie them about thy neck. When thou goest, it shall lead thee. What is it? What your father commanded, what your, what your mother commanded. 
When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee, and when thou awakest, it shall talk with thee. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and the reproofs of instruction are the way of life. What happens is when you limit yourself by principle and you come next to one of those limits or cross it, it will reprove you and instruct you to get back in line. What you've seen in Proverbs chapter 4 and what you've seen in Proverbs chapter 6 is early principles are established at home. Mom and dad lay down certain rules for you say, a son, I don't want you to date when you're 14 years old. I don't want you to date when you're 16 years old or whatever the case may be. And, it, and, and, and there's a principle there. Son, I don't want you to go into debt. Don't borrow money to buy your first car. That is a principle. Here's another principle. Don't take a job in a city where there's not a good church. I know a man that had that principle. He was offered double money for the same thing to go to work for another country, a company. He went to that city and there wasn't a good church within driving distance for his family. He turned down the offer and I'm talking about that was a lot of money, but he had a principle. I know another man whose decisions about things on the mission field are all based on the principle that things that God does are, are uh, organized and, and uh, handled through the local church. And, the, and some men go to the mission field and they're not interested in doing things out of a local church or by way of establishing a local church. And so this man's, this pastor's principle is we're not going to support that because it's one of the principles. And see, there are a variety of principles. A young lady will say, I am not going to give myself to a man until I'm married to him. That's a principle. If he says, I, I want to enjoy those privileges with you now before marriage, then she says, perhaps our relationship is not the right relationship for us because that's not my principle. She makes, he makes a decision that he's going to keep himself for his wife, and so he's not going to play around while his friends are playing around. He is going to uh, tend to things that are serious by way of the Word of God, and then when the right time comes, um, he, will, he will marry and then begin to enjoy those privileges of marriage, and not before then. Those are all principles. Another man sets down ethical guidelines for the way he's going to conduct business, and if somebody wants to hire him and, and, and be unethical, he'll say, I'm not going to go to work for you. That is unethical. So these are the principles should limit your decisions. And then, and then this, counsel. Counsel should establish. Counsel should establish your decisions. Proverbs chapter 15, look at verse 22. Proverbs chapter 15, look at verse 22. Without counsel, purposes are disappointed. But in the multitude of counselors, watch it, they are established. And he says, without counsel, purposes are disappointed. In other words, you may think you've made the right decision. Counsel would show you that you haven't and keep you from uh, following your heart into something that's not right. Uh, Proverbs chapter 24, look at verse 6. For by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war, and in multitude of counselors there is safety. Counsel should establish your decisions. Now, counsel shouldn't be used to confirm your bad decisions. Some people have already made a bad decision. They come to a group of people that they know will back them. They're yes men. They'll back them on anything they want to do. And they'll say, well, I got counsel on it. All my friends said, that's a good idea. You're just like, uh, you're just like um, Reboam who rejected the counsel of the old men so that he could get the counsel of the young men who favored doing what Reboam already wanted to do. Counsel, counsel shouldn't confirm your bad decisions. It should establish your good decisions and refine your choices so that you can make the best and most informed decisions. I have pastors that call me. I call pastors. And oftentimes they are looking at a situation. They I only have these two ways of dealing with it. And, and they know they need to do something. And so they'll they will talk and then they'll see, I didn't see that. Here's another uh, opportunity. And they'll get a little more counsel on the thing. And then all of a sudden they have not just made a good decision. They've made the best decision. They've made the most informed decision. It's worked for me. It's worked for them. It's just a good thing. All right. Now, let's review these five things. And then I'm going to show you three considerations to watch out for. The major considerations when making decisions. Number one, the fear of God should govern your decisions because that's where wisdom comes from. The Bible should direct your decisions because that's where you're going to see the will of God. Prayer should guide your decisions because that's where you're going to know God's thoughts about what you're going to do. Principles should limit your decisions so that you simply take certain decisions off the table if they go against your principles. 
and counsel should establish your decisions so that the decision you're making will absolutely be the best decision and not just a good decision. All right, now, given those things, there are three things, three considerations that you really need to watch out for. Number one, circumstances can control your decisions. You see, circumstances make you reactionary rather than proactive. What we've been talking about up to this point is that you are calmly assured of going in God's direction because you have sought the God's way of making decisions. But let's say your life starts becoming chaotic and you are dealing with one circumstance after another. You simply jump from one circumstance to the next like you're on a merry-go-round. And you're like, I cannot stop long enough in order to make any right decisions because I am just constantly having to deal with one thing coming at me after another. You know what? You know what to do? Stop. Stop. The Bible says, be still and know that I am God. You just have to stop. You have to get alone with God and settle down. Some of these decisions that you are making that are reactionary don't need to make, be made today. They can be made a later time. You've got to get with God and know where He is. Once you settle down, once you get along with God, God can lead you, and that's what you need. You need God leading you rather than letting your circumstances lead you. You say, well, I, I, just, I can't deal with these things. One thing right after another. You're in a bad situation. You are on what I call, you're on the merry-go-round. And you have to step off the merry-go-round and see your life from a fixed position. Be still and know that I am God. So that you can sort it out one thing at a time. Hard to do, I'll grant you, but you got to do it. Here's another consideration. Something to watch out for. Sin. Sin can skew your decisions. In Proverbs chapter 5, in verses 22 and 23, Proverbs chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, the Bible says, His own iniquities shall take the wicked himself, and he shall be holden with the cords of his sins. Since he will drag you away, drag you into bad decisions, he shall die without instruction. And in the greatness of his folly, foolishness, he shall go astray. Sin can really skew your decisions. You see, what sin does, it drags you into making bad decisions. It gets a hold of you and, and starts confusing you and deceiving you and bringing you into a situation where now you've made one bad decision. You lied, you, you, you cheated, you did something. Now you have to make another bad decision on top of that bad decision to cover for that bad decision. And it has a compounding effect. Sin, and, and I'll tell you what else. Sin is so deceiving, it can make you think you're doing right when you aren't. I know folks, friends of mine, or acquaintances of mine, whatever you want to call them, who are doing things right now, and they are fully persuaded in their own minds that what they're doing is absolutely okay with God. And all you can say is sin has totally deceived them into believing that they're right, and that the Bible is wrong, and therefore we who stand for the Bible are wrong. And they've separated themselves from us, because we don't know what we're talking about, man. But God said what I'm doing is a-okay. God is allowing me this. That's uh, the, the uh, epitome of the deceitfulness of sin. And, and, you know, you won't know how wrong you are when you've, been, when you've been misled by sin in making your decisions. You won't know how wrong you are until you get your fill of the consequences of your sins and until you get your fill of the chastisement of God and then you're like oh man what have I been doing you know the tragic thing is you might not know that you have been deceived by sins and that your the decisions are being skewed by sin until you face God at the judgment seat of Christ and you know the tragedy is now now you can't do anything about it your life is done it's over your race is run you you can't make any adjustments now you say, well, how in the world do I stop those bad decisions? Stop the sin. You go to the Bible, you see what Bible, the Bible calls sin. If you're doing any of those things, you stop that. And then what happens is that element that's, infect, that's affecting your ability to make decisions is gone. And suddenly you start thinking right again. And, and your heart gets right again. Finally, I'd like to say, uh, be careful when you're making decisions. For this, emotions, emotions can complicate your decisions. Uh, what you're deciding might, quote, feel right and be dead wrong. That's right. 
that's an emotional thing. You say, well, I, I'm thinking it feels like the right thing to me. That's emotional. And when you make decisions, when you're emotional, you make wrong decisions. You make bad decisions. Decisions, for instance, made in anger are always bad decisions. You know that. You've tried it. So are decisions made in fear. Anytime you're afraid and you're trying to make a decision, usually you panic and make a bad decision. Isn't that strange? So to keep from making bad decisions when you're emotional, get with someone in your life who's strong, who understands your emotional tendencies. It's nice, for instance, when you're married, if your spouse is a real good balance to you, he or she knows when you're, you know, uh, being affected by your emotions, when your heart is being, you know, bouncing a little bit. And you just say with them, look, I'm trying to make this decision. And I, I, I really don't know if I'm feeling, you know, reacting this way because I, I, I'm feeling fearful or, or mad. And your spouse, who's not usually involved in that particular emotion, can look at you and say, you know what, uh, you're... <laughs> You just need to settle down. You just need to settle down. And once you're not emotional, you can make this decision. You know what? When you do that, you can settle down with God. And when you're settled, listen, you will know what to do. That's right. When you're settled and you're free of that emotional pull, that, that strong pull of love or fear or hatred or anger, then you'll be able to settle down and say, you know what? It's clear now. I can see exactly what to do. Because you're not being pulled by the emotions. Don't be in a hurry when you're making decisions. Be deliberate. The Bible says, he that hasteth with his feet sinneth. <laughs> Don't be in a hurry. And when you're not in a hurry, then you can let the fear of God and the Bible and prayer and your principles and good counsel guide you and help you in the decisions. And you can, you can not be controlled by your circumstances and you can see the sin that's messing with your heart and you can ah, give time for those emotions to settle down and then you'll be making good decisions and you'll live with this I'll tell you, you you'll live with what you've just heard for the rest of your life they will really these things will really help you amen you have been listening to the unknown bible the radio ministry of bible believers baptist church in corpus christi texas for information about our church go to our church website at www.my3bc.com That's my, the number 3, bc.com If you would like to contact us by telephone, our number is 361-241-6100 Bible Believers Baptist Church is a Bible-believing church located at 1701 Rand Morgan Road. If you are not currently a member of a Bible-believing church and you are looking for a church with an uncompromising stand on the words of God, Come visit with us this Sunday or Wednesday. We would love to see you. Hallelujah.